this is Father Mike Jackis, and I have been asked to talk about my new Mass service, which is the Mass in honor of St. Rose Philippine Duchenne. This is actually one of the most fascinating uh, commissions that I've ever received in my compositional career. The Religious of the Sacred Heart, which is a wonderful um, collection of women religious, uh, in this case headquartered in St. Louis, wanted to celebrate the 200th anniversary of the arrival of one of their founders, St. Rose Philippine Duchenne, in the United States. And I honestly knew very little about her. I had seen her name, uh, but had never read a biography, had really no sense of what she had done. And when the sisters gave me information about it, I was absolutely surprised and delighted to be invited to do this commission. Now, let me say something about the saint, and then I'll say something about the, the service. Uh, her great claim to fame is her desire to evangelize both Native Americans and African Americans, as well as other folks who had come over from the old world to what was now the new world. And she had received an invitation from, I believe, the Bishop of New Orleans uh, and came over with some of her sisters thinking that there would be a convent there for them. Well, as the story goes, to me at least, um, the Bishop had not uh, prepared anything for them. So they decided to go up the Mississippi all the way nearly to St. Louis and there founded a school and then constructed their own convent. Now, we could talk a lot about her, but the major thing I want you to, to hear is that toward the end of her life, when I believe she was around 70, she went with a couple of Jesuit missioners to a Potawatomi uh, village. And at that stage, she really, obviously she was a French speaker natively, and I believe she learned some English, but at age 70, you're not going to learn a Native American language. So what she did was simply stayed in the village as a presence and a presence who prayed. And the Potawatomi gave her the name, She Who Prays Always. And once I heard that story, I thought, wow, this is someone that you could really um, uh, rejoice in her witness and her, her life. So, uh, what the sisters suggested is that this would be a mass service uh, using the usual uh, movements that you would expect in the, in the Reformed liturgy, as well as a hymn in her honor. We knew that on November 18th of 2018, there'd be a major celebration for her in the uh, St. Louis Cathedral. So I could write a chamber orchestra um, uh, accompaniment for an SATB choir and cantor. And that's quite exciting. Um, I hadn't done anything like that since the No Greater Love Mass that GIA published some, some years ago. But the sisters also were wise enough to know a chamber orchestra accompanied mass is not going to be useful for most places. So they hoped that I'd also do an SATB version with organ accompaniment and maybe an obligato instrument of some sort. And that would be for Sunday worship in parishes. And finally, they were hoping that I would have just a single melodic line that a congregation could sing with piano accompaniment, and that would be intended for their schools. So three different settings, frankly, of all of the movements of the Mass. And I rejoiced to get that kind of a commission because it really exercises your compositional uh, intelligence. Um, not to go on too much farther about it, but to give you a little hint of what's different about it, they, the commissioners hoped that I would have some sense of Native American music that there might be some African-American music themes in it, as well as rather standard European uh, voice leaning, 
because that would give a sense of the world in which uh, St. Rose Philippine Duchenne uh, did her work. So in fact, there are a couple of points where amen may be uh, substituted with the Potawatomi word aho. And again, two syllables, so you could use the same music for it. Uh, but a little example of enculturation. Um, and there are other uh, issues in it. There is, for example, in the Lamb of God, there's a regular pulse that to my ear sounds as though a Native American uh, community is beating a drum in 4-4 and that that rhythmic impetus is really at the core of that movement. Similarly, the, the uh, uh, Lord have mercy, to my ear at least, sounds like a kind of uh, spiritual maybe 19th century version, um, so that there are those kinds of influences in this mass setting, which are different from any, any other things I've written. And so, with that as background, I hope that you might find this useful in your own parish community. Uh, you might want to check it out and uh, see if it's possible that the music that was intended to celebrate St. Rose Philippine Duchenne could also be extended to other parts of the United States or maybe even the English-speaking world. Oh, yeah.